Hello, my name is Uguerre and welcome to Hugo's Desk. Today I'm going to disconstruct a real production shot from the Home Front the Revolution live action trailer that I co-directed last year at Fire.Smoke. We are going to disconstruct and go through the main Nuke script of the compositing of the shot of the garage, which was the first shot of the project. Now this is of course a very big script, as you can see here, it is quite big. As much as I want to try to make these videos as short as possible, we might have to skip certain things. Or if I do skip a lot of things, I might just do a version 2 of this video, or I might do a part 2. Without further ado, let's just get on with it. So the first thing, of course, it all kind of started with some piece of footage. And this footage comes from Stiller Studios, so if you guys want to check out Stella Studios. They are a really good uh, motion control studio in Stockholm. One of my buddies, uh, Thomas Wall, runs the studio there uh, as a VFX director, and you should definitely check out their website at stellarstudios.com. They do amazing work. Now, this shot was filmed on the Red Epic uh, Dragon. It was shot on 6K. We then did the keying, the rotoscoping in 6K. So the result of that, which I will show on another video, was this render. And this is the final render with an alpha channel. Now, when we keyed and rotoscoped at 6K, it was to try to maintain as much detail as we could. Then we, of course, down res it for the actual final comp. We were delivering in 2.5K for YouTube. Now, originally, this was shot as 6K, like I said. So this is the original plate. And as you can see, not only it has an enormous amount of detail. Look at this. You can actually read all the instructions on the, on the floor. You can even see all the little ribbons and all the little screws. Uh, but it also had a huge dynamic range. So shooting with the Red, red Dragon is always one of my favorite things because it's such an amazing camera. Let's just, just look at this light here. So there's like an enormous amount of leverage on this piece of footage. Um, and all of the dynamic range is still here. So as you can see here, all these highlights are still here. You have a huge sensor dynamic range. Uh, it's a really wonderful camera. I really like it. Anyway, moving on. So as I move on, I'm gonna go all the way up to the top. As you can see, my script is as organized as I could because it was a production, of course. But as I go to the top here, this is an actual matte painting projected in Maya. Now this was done by the lovely David Gibbons and he created this matte painting in Photoshop and then we projected it in Maya using simple geometry. It was a very simple piece of geometry, it's just a cube. Now let's um, open up, uh, now I, I need to show you a few secrets about this matte painting. Now this is the original matte painting, as you can see, highly organized and as always, very good for you to organize yourself if you really want to use Nuke's 3D system or even any other thing, it's always good to organize the, the Photoshop file. I need to show you this. Uh, if you look closely here, um, the matte painting is kind of created by a bunch of photos of Korea, a bunch of matte paintings, paintings and clips that we actually put in, some posters of, you know, we even have Godzilla here, we have some Korea posters, we have some random photos of Korean leaders. Um, it's a really interesting matte painting, but David also put myself in the matte painting as well. So this was something very funny when we did this. But of course, there were people in front of me. So I don't, I, I'm not seen in the video because of the depth of field and because of the people in front. But it's a little nice touch that I'm there saying, get on, you know, get on with it. Come on, just get on with it. So that's just a little, little thing that I wanted to show you. I'm back in Nuke. This was, of course, rendered in Redshift. Now, because this was mostly a matte painting, we couldn't really, like, extract a lot of passes. So we got a fake specular pass we created. I'll show you in a minute what we do with it. We have, of course, a fog pass. Now, this fog pass is very special. We have multiple colored fog pass. It's not a rainbow fog color pass. It's basically we have the normal fog pass, which allows you to do some kind of scale and some kind of color correction. And uh, then I have the, what I call a Y pass, which is a Y fog, which allows you to do some color correction on the lower section. So you can, you know, maybe fix some atmospherics on the floor. Uh, and then we have the side fog as well, so that it allows you to just fog up one side or the other. So these these are one of my favorite passes in CG. It's very, very helpful in color correction. Then we have basically some normals. We have, you know, some positions, some utilities, which some I'm in occlusion. Uh, we also have, of of course, and my object IDs and uh, the works. And of course, then when we reconstruct, it is one of the fastest reconstructions in the world. We only have two passes. So we start with, of course, the raw pass, uh, which is just the matte painting. And then we picked up and used this fake specular pass, 
which is nothing more than just an extraction of certain elements on the matte painting. We graded it a little bit, we desaturated a little bit, and then we put in a little diffuse glow and then merge it as a screen. This gave it a sense that the sun or the light was hinting the garage and it was hitting all these highlights. Then as that goes in and then it gets merged on top. And as you can see here, it just gives you this little nice feeling of highlights hitting the objects. Now on this side, we start having our 3D systems. So on this side, I have the post-its and then on here, we have some other random elements. So if you look in here, um, you have, I'm just gonna show you in the 3D system. So this is literally, we have a TV, we have the carpet, we have some wires hanging on the table. These were literally extra stuff that we never put on the matte painting, but then, you know, progressively as we were doing the shot, we worked on this for months, we started adding things. Uh, David wasn't on the project anymore, so we started adding them in the 3D system of Nuke. The post-its were an afterthought as well, and because it was an afterthought, we did them later. Uh, now, they, they were created in geometry, so as you can see, they were done in Maya, and they actually banned in everything. Um, now, they had multiple texts on them. Uh, we had someone that knew Korean to write some texts for us. We're just merging them all and putting them inside uh, the, the read geos for each post-it. So we, we had multiple types of post-its that were banded in Maya, and then we used the read geos to actually bring them in. And that gives you a bunch of post-its with some text. Um, that's quite simple, as you can see. Then we merge the shadows. So I did, um, basically what I did here was I used the Roto and then use its alpha, transformed it, blurred it, and use it as an actual shadow before I merged it. And then of course we did exactly the same thing with the post-its. Here are some post-its on the corner of the door. They get merged, and as you can see here, these are the shadows that we placed into the post-its. So the shadows are nothing more than a little offset on the post-its, a little blur, and then a grade note. Now, I know this is dirty as hell, but it works, you know. And then as we continue, we have the whiteboard. Now, the whiteboard was an actual whiteboard that we've made in Korean, and then we've placed it in the 3D system. Now, the whiteboard also was created uh, with some fake shadows. As you can see here, I have my whiteboard. Then I have my shadow, which is the wall shadow. And then I have the floor a brightness, you know, because it's a whiteboard. So white, of course, transfers a lot of white. So you basically have the whiteboard, you have its shadow, and then you have the white reflection. And again, I know this is really dirty and it's not supposed to be like this, but you know, it works really well. And again, we really had to cut a lot of corners because we couldn't really render everything. You know, it was a relatively low budget production. Then we go into a lot of color correction. So let me just go through this really quick. Then we have a little bit more color correction. I'm gonna go into the final frame so you can kind of see the color correction going on. And then we have uh, the luminance of the window. Now this is of course a key because this was part of a matte painting. So we did a key and then we just use the grade note to actually luminance, pretending there was a lot of the sun outside. I put a bit of a diffuse glow using a glow, very blurred glow and a very blurred glow to basically create a sense of haze. And then we had the lamp. Now this lamp here was nothing more than a roto shape that we've used as a color corrector. And as you can see, it just lights up a bit. And then we made like a little fake shadow uh, for the shell. So this is a color correction that basically creates the shadow, the contact shadow area of the table. And then we have the ceiling lamp. Then we had a bit of a relight session here. So the relighting happens by using the fog pass and then merging it. And then I do a bit of a color correction and then I use it as, as a color corrector. So basically I'm trying to darken just this side because on that side, there was a cupboard and there was a table. And then I have a bit of overhaul color correction to make it a bit more blue and dark inside the, sh the, inside the room. Then I have my Y fog. So the Y fog is literally that depth of pass that I told you about. We grade it a little bit to make it a bit more uh, sticking to the floor, almost like an atmosphere. And then it creates this here. It basically creates a sense of haziness in the floor with a bit of a blue tint. We then put the whiteboard on it with the shadow. So you see, this is the whitish reflection, the shadow and everything. And then it's a depth of field. Depth of field, of course, as usual, we used the focal plane setup to try to organize depth of field. And then we basically have, of course, more depth of field when we begin. And then it kind of animates. So we have like, a, you know, 
nice bouquet, nice depth of field, and then at the end, it kind of almost becomes sharp as the camera becomes wider. Then I have some post uh, blur additional glints and glows. So we have some color correction on the outside door. So you see, I wanted to push the outside because there's sun hitting it. A bit of glow for the outside of the door, more glow for the outside of the door, but a little smaller glow. And then we merge both of them together. Now this is giving you this kind of sense of middle of the afternoon when the sun hits the white picket fences so it kind of glows and everything so then we have some dirt as you can see here we have some dirt outside this is of course a matte painting that we've put on the geometry then we have the lens distortion so this was the actual distortion from the plate that we shot which you'll see in a minute uh, then we have yet more color correction um on all of this so let's just have a look here so we have color correction, a bit more color correction. We have some masks and some more color correction. So we have a bit less light outside. And then we have more color correction, <laughs> a lot of color correction. And then of course we have the shadows. Now these are the first moments where we put some shadows. Now these shadows were created by the 3D system. So what we did here was we picked up the alpha channel that we've keyed. We basically frame hold it. Uh, we basically put it on a 3D system card like this which I know it's uh, not very uncommon. And then we rendered it out as an alpha channel, which is nothing more than a projection of the floor with the footage. Um, so this, these are kind of the fake shadows that we are creating for the table. This then gets merged into a grade node. So now this grade node is nothing more than a multiply of zero one. Some more shadows. So this is the shadow extraction of the actual floor. Now the shadow extraction was done this way. So we have the actual green screen. As you can see, I've put like a, a gray blanket in the floor in purpose. Um, I know we needed to do a lot of roto, but at least it helped for the extraction. Now the extraction itself uh, was created by doing a bit of color correction, more color correction, a lot of contrast. We inverted the actual color correction we've made. So we basically had this one, and then it gets merged with a roto shape that only focus on this area here. So this is almost like a negative version of the shadow, and then it gets uh, inverted back again. Now this here, the first one is the alpha channel of the actual key that we've made, gets channel merged against the shadows, and then the second one is the opposite of it. So this one is merging together with the other shadows. Now this means that in here on the actual comp, we then get this shadow here, which is a very small, subtle shadow. And then we get the more hard shadow that actually has the highlights of the sun in the carpet. And then some more shadows. And then, sorry about that. This is a bit, a bit too much stuff to go through. Um, and then some more shadows. And then finally, we start putting in the actual plate. Now, we started putting the plate as an additive here. So this was the basically clean plate. And like I said, we had a motion control, so we could use the clean plate. So we used the clean plate, and then we used, of course, the raw plate. Uh, those were both degrained, so they are very, very denoised. And as they are denoised, then they get they go into an additive gear. The additive gear then uh, gets merged on the background and it regains all this little nice detail of the hair and we get all these little nice nuances of everything, including myself. I'm still there. <laughs> my name is, my face is still there. And also we get all the nice details of the shoes as well. Finally, we put the background in. So let's just talk about the background really quickly. The background came in as a pre-rendered alpha channel, like I explained to you guys. Now this then got... We rotated a little bit. We then wrote a bit of roto paint because there was a few issues with the mat. Uh, we then had to uh, color correct and merge all these uh, boxes. So all these boxes had to be tracked and we had to put some new um, labels on it. Uh, all these labels are Korean labels uh, to pretend that the boxes are from Korea. And they come from a label which is nothing more than a 3D system that was pre-rendered. So we basically had another Nuke script which had all these labels in 3D, and then we rendered it um, as an RGB um, with the alpha channel of the boxes, and they, they get merged on to the boxes. Then we have the shoes. Now the shoe, we had to do a patch for the shoe 
because uh, the client didn't really want it to be so noticeable that it was a brand shoe. So we had to do a roto paint, and this is what that patch is to remove these stripes. Then we continue and we unpremolt everything. So unpremolt everything so that we can do a lot of color correction. Um, and then we do color correction. So in here, it's literally just a bunch of color correction nodes that we do, some fog, some more color correction, you know, it's quite a lot of color correction. I want to put the tires back in. I wanted the light to be a bit uh, uh, duller. Um, and then there's, of course, even more color correction and even more color correction. And all these color corrections kind of are driven by radial uh, nodes and they're tracked and animated so that they can kind of like affect just the faces or affect just certain parts of the body. And then uh, there's a bit of a color edge extension going on here. So as you can see here, we're trying to fix the edges. You can see that this edge extension just kind of fixes some of the white edges that we had on the hair. We finally get it completely pre-multiplied. And then if you come here, you can see that we've merged some extra posters on the corner. We've also merged the TV. So if I zoom in closely here, you can see all the TVs work actually merged with different um, screens. So we have, of course, a 3D system that has some Apex Korean technology here. This is all coming from here. So it's all coming from an actual magazine that we had from Korea that we've made. We had an actual poster in the 3D system as well. And of course we had the text, which is uh, this one here. So it's the Apex text, the loader uh, for the DOS. Um, this all goes into a 3D system. Now this all gets merged in. So now we go back to our CG. Our CG was here with the additive keyer. We then did a bit of a light wrap. Uh, light wrap is more visible if you zoom in here. So you see, I have some light wrap from the beginning. If I go to the first frame, you can kind of see it a bit better. Then we have the volumes. So this is the outside window that we, we did with using a, a volume rise. So basically we use the 3D system to basically use the 3D coordinates to move a volume ray. So this is the first volume ray we have, then we have the top volume ray of one of the lamps, then we have the other lamp on the other side, and then we have the actual window on the other side. Now all these get merged together. So as you can see here, starting to be a bit slow as you can see. So all these are lights done in 2D that we did, you can see here. Then we're reaching the end almost, look at that, that's cool. And then we have some final tweaks. So we have a bit of a grade node, a bit of a clamp, then a weighted blur to make a really diffuse, diffuse looking image, a bit of a contrast, and then we screen it on top just to give it a bit of diffuse. Then we have a final grade. Then we have some more color correction. So we have then, uh, you know, some kind of blue greenish tint. We have some more color correction. Then we have some more color correction. Then we have some more color correction. And then we have uh, some more color correction and some more color correction and some more color correction. Um, and then, of course, a bit of a flare. Uh, always good with the flare. And then some final tweaks. So I have a radial for a vignette. Get a bit of vignetting going on so that we focus the attention on them. Then I push the vignette even further so we can focus the attention on them even more. And then a bit of a clamping. Uh, my little trick of the lock tool in to sharpen the image. This kind of gives you a bit more like a, a stylized 60s look. And then of course some grain, which is not the plates grain, no. This is a highly stylized project, so I put the grain myself. And that was it. And that's the final, final, final shot there. So I'm going to just do a really cheeky thing here. So I'm just going to bring in the original thing. As you can see, from Stellar Studios in Stockholm to North Korea in the 60s. In a press of a button. <laughs> well, a press of many buttons. And that was it, really. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it was way too long, I understand that. Of course, also I had to skip quite a lot of steps, especially the green screen uh, and the keying in the roto, which I think I, I should do a separate video altogether about that. As always, please subscribe to Hugo's Desk to see more videos like these, and of course also gaming reviews, technology reviews, essays, and many, many more visual effects related videos. Follow me on Twitter at Hugo C. Guerre and also support our channel in Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and I see you next time.